พระราหูอมจันทร์หรืออมสุริยาราหูอาสุรเดวะเอทิงเดอะมูนออฟเดอะซันเดอะคลิปส์กอดอัสตรโลจิคอลอาสุรเดวะออฟเดอะจัตุมหาราชิกาเรลม์และนี่คือคาร์บด์ในเนื้อกะลาตาเดียวเผือกอัลปิโนวันไอท์โคเปนัตวิดแฮนด์อินสคริปชันส์ออนเดอะเรียร์เฟสวิชิสเอ็กซ์ตรีมลีเอจิดแอนด์คาร์ฟบายอะมาร์ตมาสเตอร์อาร์ติซันอินลานาอาร์ติสติกทรดิชันแอนด์เบลส์แอนด์แฮนด์อินสคริปต์บายเดอะเกรทครูบาลันตาของวัดทุ่งมันใต้วัดทุ่งมันใต้ And Pat Rahu, of course, improves your fate and your fortunes, removes obstacles, decreases bad karma, increases good karma, can increase your status and your professional success. It's a good protection against black magic. It's good for auspicious horoscope. Yeah. And uh, in Southeast Asia, a lot of people in the modern world believe it's good against backstabbers in the workplace. Um, I don't want to talk about that, especially not in this particular slideshow of this beautiful and very rare albino one-eyed coconut carving from k u b a n a n t a And k u b a n a n t a used one of his preferred master artisans, who all had to be Luxit with the Wicca or Prat Rahu. And uh, hand inscribed with the w i c h a from k u b a n a n t a and the rear face reveals a true aging or well over a centurion amulet, meaning more than a hundred years. And the age of the inscriptions of k u b a n a n t a uh, just shout out the word ancient. The front face is beautifully carved. The rear face. Shows all the aspects of true aging char- characteristics, slightly different from normal coconut, albino coconut. As uh, the fibrous substance is slightly different, and the aging is very easy to see because of the different tonalities of dark and light, which is less visible on the dark coconut. <coughs> Uh, here we see a close-up of the rear face, where we can see the aging aspects of the uh, Galata d i o There's not really that much known about k u b a n a n t a although there are some biographical documentations, but none of them complete, because he spent a lot of time on Tudong. Traveling through the forests, um, but the earliest actual evidence of him making p a t r a h u amulets, um, which he must have learned the witch on t u d o n g long before that, before um, evidence started turning around with devotees, he must have been handing them out before that, because it takes time for word to get out. But uh, the first official evidence. Uh, Of a inscribed Galata d i a r a h u image from k u b a n a n t a uh, was recorded in the year 2456 BE, and that is considered to be one of his early era one-eyed coconut shell carvings. Although it is believed that there are various different models, handmade. Uh, made in different areas by different artisans, which he made on his travels into Dong over the years. So there are very many different models, but most of them recognizable by their Lana artistry, and uh, the most accepted and of course the pricey models are the ones which are easily recognized by accepted and recognized known documented artisans. Um, Such as one who used to like to make uh, a yantra in the center and then carve the rahu around it with the arms enclosing the yantra, but in different forms: in round, in oval, in wide shape, 
in uh, hexagonal shape and all sorts of shapes in shapes like a lotus petal and um, five-sided shapes and standing shapes with legs without legs all sorts of models some simple carvings which were made from larger pieces of uh, coconut um, and also, the smaller carvings were more detailed, made from uh, master artisans. Kupananta himself was born in 2415 uh, BE, and it's said that he was a Kubajan of Rumponoi of uh, Walsi Satong, uh, but some say that's a myth. Rumponoi of Walsi Satong in Nakompatom in central Thailand was the son of a Lao immigrant from the north, Lana, also of Lana tradition, and was very famous for Prat Rahu amulets. But the Prat Rahu amulets of the Nakompatom district, even though they were made from four or five different famous temples and masters who were all of uh, Lao origin, nearly all of Lao origin, and did the Lao type of design on their Parahu Galatad Diao. It's not sure that any of them were direct Luxid or Krupananta, but it is said that Lumponoi learned his Wicha from Krupananta. Um, I would say it's um, irrelevant because each of these masters have their own personal traject trajectories and their amulets differ in style and their empowerment methods and both of them have their value for different reasons. For me, Krupananta has a much more stronger historical value because uh, it dates much further back and it's at the point where uh, living memory and uh, um, remembered history is lost beyond that point where the names of monks were not known but then the amulets are known the famous Prakru amulets and so um, once you get over 200 years or 250 years old and approaching 300 years you start to lose the names of monks and Krupananta was one of the uh, oldest monks who we have documented although very little is documented and is considered one of the greatest Lana masters and the number one master for which are Prat Rahu Kalata Diao. So John Spencer for the Buddha Magic Project signing off. Remember, just empty your thoughts and just stare at it. Stare at it and don't think anything and see what appears before your eyes. Don't look for anything. Just see what turns up and keep staring at it and stare at it and don't think anything and see what you can see. So if you haven't realized yet, it's time to focus upon the Moen San and stare at it until things start appearing and you start to notice the myriad of aspects of content and aging characteristics to be found within the Moen San. Experts really like to look at the rear faces and the sides and especially if there is a broken chunk where you can see inside the interior of the substance of the amulet which is what we're looking at right now and it's one of the favorite methods of experts. Although it goes much deeper than this, on the surface we should notice as beginners the mildew arising and how the powdery affixed gold leaf 
is stuck on and has become more of a porousy kind of effect where some has plaked up and some has stayed stuck on and the mildew arising and the different aspects of the grains of the interior of the coconut shell in this case I'll be my coconut shell and the cracks and the depth of the cracks and the aging of the interior of the shell if you see one that's 10 years old 50 years old 100 years old 150 years old you will begin to see the difference especially if there are inscriptions or there are chinks where you can see inside because that's where you will see the aging where the interior has been exposed to the atmosphere it doesn't change as much as the exterior but it does change and that's why from Lumpurnoi and Kubanata the inscriptions are hard to see because they're almost the same colour as the surface of the amulet themselves even though they should be lighter in colour because when they're freshly inscribed they will be lighter and you can see them but um, they're not very much lighter than the surface of the rest of the amulet which would be the case with a freshly inscribed piece of um, coconut shell